For those who are here seated and those who are walking around, we are delighted to join us and to join with you as we deal with the panorama of Bible prophecies. My name is Rukunda Stewart. I come from Uganda, the part of Africa. <laughs> My name is Yabuti Amos. I come from Nairobi, Kenya, the capital of Africa. <laughs> we are deeply delighted to be here tonight to bring to you the panorama of Bible prophecies. And everything is about to change. You may be wondering, what is the panorama of Bible prophecy? Today we live in a world that seems to be changing. And something we need to appreciate, the Bible has spoken about everything that is actually happening today. And therefore, as we deal with the panorama of Bible prophecy, we are going to see where we are in history as far as the Bible history is concerned. And so, do not miss. Wow. I will be presenting with my brother from the capital of Africa. <laughs> and I'll be presenting with my brother from the palm of Africa. And beloved, we are here to lift up Jesus Christ and to understand the Bible prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. And I believe that Jesus Christ will be the center of our presentations. We are not here to collect your money either. Neither are we here to condemn any man. As many people nowadays, they preach for a short time and the rest of the time they are collecting money and seeds from people. But then here we are just interested to bring you Christ and Him crucified who is the center of your salvation. And I want to invite you, whenever you come here the, every evening, please invite a friend, for we live in the days that we are not sure what comes tomorrow. And we will be having some interesting programs for you and anyone who is nearby listening to us. We'll be glad if you join us. We have the first program every day. Including health lectures and on how we can live better at the end time. And then after that, we shall be having uh, family life lectures and how you should live in the life of marriage, husband and wife, and those who are looking forward to having a partner. And what is so interesting, we we'll have some beautiful music, like what you have just seen and much more yet to come. And then after that, we shall be going in directly into the paroma of Bible prophecy. Everything in our world is about change. Prepare for the change that God may change it. And what would be our future topics? Interesting. What is coming is the new world order in tomorrow's lesson. And Bible prophecy reveals to us the future, the past and the present. With those few remarks, would like to invite us to raise up as we have a word of prayer. Beautiful. Let's believe and pray. Our dear loving Father, what in heaven, we come before your presence in a special way. We thank you for the opportunity to stand before your children. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you and learn and to make Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. As we begin this prophecy and panorama of Bible prophecy, we pray that Jesus will find a place in the hearts of all that will be listening to this service. We pray that you'll be with us, you'll stand with us, and every lesson that we are going to learn in this place, the Holy Spirit will make it useful in our lives. Let Jesus be all in all, and let the Holy Spirit be our chief guest. And we pray that, Lord, may you bring all your children to listen to your word. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. This meeting is for everyone, all religions, and even those who don't go to church either. So invite a friend that we can learn together. Our lesson for this evening, the signs of 
Armageddon is the end near all only fear. Blooded, when COVID-19 came on this planet Earth, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> what came to, my, to, to your mind? I think life was coming to an end. I thought probably the end was just near. And what is so interesting, in the United States of America, people began gathering food as well as guns preparing for the end time. And in CNBC News, we were being told of meet your neighbor, the survivalists. And the question was, there is a new breed of Americans talking up on canned goods and ammunition. It's not the guy hiding out in the backwoods. It's your neighbor. People were actually gathering food in in, 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 in containers, in glass containers, preparing for the end time. And it's very interesting because the article was describing the particular man in California who living in a very nice home had a garage full of stocks. <laughs> very <laughs> precious. And he had spent some $20,000. Nowadays, there are even websites which are preparing people for the end time. And here we find the author of the blog who wrote a book and his question was how to survive the end of the world as we know it. Could we be living at the end time, beloved? And what is being sold to us and what is the expectations of the world today? With the calamities that are happening around us, would it be an indicator of the end of the world? And so many people are asking the question, are we living in the end? Will this world ever come to an end? There's a lot of attention today on the end of the world and the things that will happen just before Jesus comes. And what is so amazing is that they are even playing it in movies since 2012. And it is interesting on how Hollywood and Nollywood <laughs> and all the woods are interested about the end of the world. <laughs> in 2020, they played a movie that dawns there and guess what? And it's about the end time. Sure, and it seems like every other year, these people are interesting, interested more and more on the end of the world. How was your experience during COVID-19? <coughs> Why you worried? <laughs> I'm telling you, people were quoting me. Pastor, is this the end of the world? Then I said, read your Bibles, Matthew 24. <laughs> and what were the news saying about the COVID? In fact, they say the human race is not special. So, why do we think we are immune to mass extinction, complete disappearing of this planet? As global temperatures rise and these summer's bushfires devastate the Australian landscape, it's a worst-case scenario that is beginning to be seriously discussed. That was according to the ABC News, March 3rd, 2020. And they continued saying that the rapid spread of the coronavirus in recent weeks has also escalated the anxiety that people feel about their mortality. Blooded, are we living at the end of the world? And what does the Bible tell us as we face the reality of the end time? Is there hope for our one torn, chaotic, polluted planet with all of its diseases and all of its problems? The Bible says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Even when calamities are ravaging our world, the Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus reminds us over and over again that trouble will come to this world, but stay focused and let not your hearts be troubled. And in fact, he emphasized John 14, verse number 1. It says, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Why? Because in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus says, if it were not so, that there are no mansions in heaven, in my Father's house, I would not tell you. And therefore, and if I go and prepare a place for you, mm -hmm. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, 
There you may be also. So planet, our final home, is not this planet Earth. And Jesus said, I will come again. And let not your hearts be troubled. In fact, Jesus, while seated upon the Mount of Olives, at the verge of him ascending to the heavenly kingdom, he draws aside a curtain of the future and reveals to us what exactly we expect as we look towards the end of the world. Let Jesus speak. And, and Je the Bible speak. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Like how the disciples were so concerned with the earthly things, they were concerned with the magnificent temple of Jerusalem. Likewise, even us today, we are so much concerned with what is happening on the planet Earth, maybe because we live here. But Jesus, when he came out of the temple, seated upon the Mount of Olives, what did he say? Actually, the disciples were looking beyond and they saw a dazzling temple. Mm -hmm. And they were all worried and wondering uh, what would be the future of his temple because it was one of the biggest temples they had ever seen. In fact, the Jerusalem temple was one of the most beautiful temples in the whole world. And but Jesus, Jesus says, And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left there one stone upon the other that shall not be thrown down. I want you to imagine the disciples saw the Jerusalem temple as a building that would never be conquered, but Christ says, not even the foundation stone will be left. Christ was looking forward to the destruction of Jerusalem temple in the year AD 70. This, did, mm -hmm. And did that happen? Yes, it did. And in fact, Jesus, for what tells us of what will happen upon the world in the figure of the Jerusalem temple. Let's see what Christ said in Matthew 24, verse number 3. The Bible says, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the signs of the coming and the end of the world? When the disciples heard that the Jerusalem temple would be brought down, they knew that sincerely the world would come to an end. And they asked Jesus, tell us, when shall all these things be? The first question was, what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world as well. Blooded, the coming of Christ will bring the world to an end. And Jesus gives us the signs in the book of Matthew 24. The signs of the destruction, literally the destruction of Jerusalem temple. But he also foresaw something concerning the signs of Armageddon. That means the signs of the end of the world. Beloved, are we living at the end time? And is Armageddon really about to come to us? Before we divest into the signs of the end of this planet, the book of Matthew 24 reveals to us two things. What can we know? And what can we not know? About the second coming of Jesus and the end of the world. In Matthew 24, verse 36, Jesus says, But of that day and hour knowest no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Jesus said, the hour of the coming of Jesus Christ, there is no man that knows that, including myself. So Do, you know, do you know it? No, I don't. Maybe since you come from the capital of Africa, you yeah. would be know it. You know, Jesus was hidden in Africa. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? But then the question is, what can we know concerning the second coming of Jesus? Can we know the day? Can we know the date? What exactly is before us? Many people have speculated about the end of the world and the coming of Jesus Christ. And here is Harold Camp from the family radio who predicts and tells us the timing of the coming of Jesus. 
that Christ would come in 2011. They say that the end of the world is almost here. Holy God will bring judgment day on May 21. And in this country, in 2000, if you were yet born, I was still a bit younger, but I heard a man by the names of Joseph Tugetere who said that the world was coming to an end in 2000. So what does the Bible have to tell us about it? Beloved, many are the speculations that have been said, even when COVID-19 came, I had people say that the world was coming to an end in July 2020. the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves you know that summer is nigh so likewise ye when you shall see all these things know that it is near even at the door so it is crystal clear we cannot know the season when christ returns we cannot know the time, but we can know the season of the coming of Jesus. Christ gave a parable using a tree. Christ gave a parable of a tree. When you see the maize yellowing in the garden, you know that the harvest is near. In other words, Christ was trying to show us that as we see the climate, the season is changing, we need to know that the end of the world is not far. Are we having climate change today? We have a lot of climate changes around. We have a lot of global warming, a lot of fires, especially in the areas where it is so hot. And so, as the seasons begin to change, is one of the indicators that the world is not far to the end. But what does the Bible say? next in the book of matthew 24. if you are there with your bibles you can go with us the book of matthew 24 verses number three four and verses number five the bible says and he has sat upon the mount of and as he was sat upon the mount of olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world Jesus answered them and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and they shall deceive many. Beloved, Jesus Christ, when he was looking forward to the end of the world, he warned us of deception. That is why as we are going to study the Bible panorama of Bible prophecy, we are going to encourage you to have your Bibles, to have a pen, a pen, you to have a piece of paper, so that you can note all these things down, for the Bible describes that there will be a deception in the last days. And the only way you can be prevented from deception is by standing by the word of God of what it says. And interestingly enough, the deception in this case is a religious type of deception and therefore the Bible wants us against being deceived in a religious setup. Jesus Christ said, many shall come in my name and they shall deceive many. And well, that is why when you come to the history of the world today, you come across so many churches and so many denominations and according to some of the numerical research and numerical data, we are told we have more than 47,000 different denominations. Very interesting. We have one God and one Bible, and yet you have more than 47,000 different Christian churches. And that is why when, that, when you hear such a thing that we have so many denominations, that sounds confusing. In Matthew 24, verse number 11, Jesus continues and says, And many false prophets shall rise, and they shall deceive many. Do we have false prophets here in Uganda? Oh, yes. Are there many false prophets in Kenya? Several in Africa. Interesting, when you research about many African nations, they are called Christian nations. And yet, they are the leading in corruption. 
Uganda, I don't know it's number one. You know better. Kenya? <laughs> it could be probably number one or two or three. It's the capital of Africa, of course. <laughs> Very interesting. Many people are turning to the religions of the Eastern. Others are worshipping things, probably for money, and they don't know actually why they are doing so. There is religious confusion. Paganism is as well more, more growing, and we are told that Paganism is one of the growing religions. Very interesting. There are today people who no longer believe in God. So, religious confusion is one of the first signs that shows that the end of the world is not far. And so the Bible has a word for confusion, or confusion in the religious world. The Bible calls it Babylon. So when you read the Bible, it tries to describe to you the kind of confusion that will be in the last days. And when you go to the Bible in the book of Revelation, as we will be studying together with you, you're going to realize that the Bible reveals to us several levels of confusion in the religious world. And it is called Babylon. So we get time and be with us here. Welcome. Take your Bible, take your pen, take your paper, and come with us as we'll be looking at Babylon. If you want to not be confused, hold the word of God. And if you want to keep yourself from being in trouble in these last days, and as you are waiting for the second coming of our Lord and Master, that the Bible will be the only safeguard that will lead you to your Savior and soul friend. Matthew 24, verse number, 20, verse number 6 and 7. Let's list the second sign that Jesus applied. And ye shall hear of wars, and ye shall see that ye be not to be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Jesus warns us of wars and rumors of wars. The Bible continues to say in verses number 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Today we are hearing, of course, a small group of people, they decide to overthrow the nation. And we also realize that this describes international conflicts that will just take place and that which is taking place before our eyes. We had Russia bombarding an innocent nation called Ukraine. And many other uh, nations and countries that are warring among themselves. 79.5 million people globally have been displaced from their homes in their mind. And that's just 1% of the entire global population. And you can imagine 79 million people, that's Uganda plus probably some neighboring country here. And as of June, the year 2021, the number had grown to 82.4 million. That's very serious. Therefore, the Bible warns us in the last days concerning international conflicts. But Jesus says, as all that is happening, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. And he offers a special promise to those who are waiting upon him. Beloved, he says, I will come again. And that's my desire. I want Jesus to come. And so Jesus continues giving us other signs that will take place just before he comes. In Matthew 24, verse number 7, what does Christ say? And there will be uh, famine, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. Someone may be wondering, why did Jesus mention this? And it has to still happen, and yet he's saying that he's famine. Blooded. Bible prophecy speaks what is going to happen, but God can never change the choices that we make. I think that is explains why we are suffering from a great economic crisis on the terms of food, beverages, and survival. And so, sign number three that shows that indeed the world is coming to an end is famine. And that is why we can expect even in our country to have famine. Now, and actually in Kenya, hmm, welcome to Uganda. <laughs> Glad we have plenty of food here yet. But in Kenya, I remember, if I was 
If you watched very clearly the news, there are people who are dying of hunger, especially in the Turkana region. Why? Because drought, there was no rain. And so, there is a serious risk of famine from 2020 onward, according to this Armstrong Economic November 21st, 2017. According to the UN News, over 800 20 million people suffering from hunger and the new UN report reveals that stubborn realities of immense global challenge will be facing us. Now, let me mention this to my fellow Ugandans. In Uganda, one of the countries on this floor that is blessed with plenty of food, even I heard the president say in this country that even a fool can survive in what? In Uganda, kindly do not throw away food. According to history, we are told that 9.1 million people die each year for starvation. That means 25,000 people die each day out of starvation. And that simply means that 17 people die every minute as a result of starvation. Can you imagine 17 people dying every minute because of having nothing to eat and you, you are pouring food in the last bit? That is why Jesus says in the last days, one of the greatest signs of his second coming and the end of the world is famine. And one of the reasons that there is so much famine is because there is overpopulation and overlessness. That is why, that's very true. When you read the Bible, you realize in the book of Ezekiel that one of the reasons of the destruction of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah was as a result of idleness. And that's actually very true. They were so idle in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, you did not need to dig in order to get food. And now we are living at a time because of idleness and many other things, we are suffering from another crisis which is called population growth. If God has blessed you in some hands, you can plant some vegetables, if possible. And here is before you a graph of how we are increasing in population. <laughs> By 2050, it is estimated we shall be more than 10 billion people. And every year that passes, we are skyrocketing year after year, increasing in population. And as we are increasing in population and consolidating ourselves in the cities, what happens is climate change. We are cutting down trees. We are put, raising uh, structures that we may accommodate ourselves. And thus, we are destroying nature. Guardian News has something to say to us concerning population. It says, though climate change is a crisis, the population threat is even worse. Why? People are producing, but without planning. And that is why, friends, as we're looking at the things that are happening, it's a reminder to us that we are living just before the end of the world. But Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. I, I will come again. again. Thank you. The other sign, the Bible says, and there will be pestilences. Now, a pestilence is more than a stomach ache. A pestilence is a disease that sweeps masses in numbers. That is why, as we are living towards the end of the world, the Bible tells us that we shall suffer from lots of pestilences. Sign number four. Diseases that sweep masses. According to World Health Organization, we are told that 31 new diseases are coming up in the, have come up in the last 20 years. Can you imagine? And one of the greatest and the one one of the things that have really surprised the entire world is the COVID-19 virus. We do not know what is coming next. All we need, Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me, and also. In God. As the years began right from COVID-19 2019, we've had and we've had threats, confirmations of these viruses over and over again, and we're expecting more and more diseases according to Bible prophecy. And not only to the human life, but also animals, animals. are being affected by diseases. But Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. 
I will come again. What else does the Bible tell us concerning the second coming? The earthquakes. The Bible says that there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. In 2020, I was inside the mountains of Ruensori, and one night at about midnight, there was an earthquake, and when I woke, because the house was shaking, I was like, wow, is the world coming to an end? <laughs> Very interesting. And in the year 2014, ABC News had this to say. Worldwide surge in great earthquake, Seen in past 10 years. We are told that between 2004 and 2014, 18 earthquakes with magnitudes of 8.0 or more rattled and subduction zones around the globe. That's an increase of 265% over the average rate of the previous earthquakes that happened. Did Jesus say that earthquakes will be a sign of the last days? Can you imagine, in the year 2021, researchers had this to say. That 133 earthquakes had taken place in the past 24 hours. And 1,032 earthquakes in the past 7 days. And then 5,440 earthquakes in the past 30 days. 57 1,361 earthquakes in just one year. That's and, a lot. And the, the news is asking a big question. Are all these earthquakes normal? <laughs> Blood heaven, let not your heart be troubled. I will come again. Sign number six. Moral decay. Today, parents are obeying their children. Instead of children, obey their parents. The Bible says, children, obey your parents. In the law. In the law. But today it's like, it's the other way around. Parents, obey your children in their will. <laughs> As a result? Of moral decay. According to June 26, 2015, we are told that the, the Supreme, Supreme Court mm -hmm. of the United States of America, what they do? They voted that a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman in the States of America. Is a man beautiful? I don't know. <laughs> Very interesting. And this is celebrated in the front of the great political sides and divides of the world. There is a saying in the world that there is nothing new under the sun. And that is why you may wonder in the book of Matthew 24 verse number 37 to 39, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were doing what? They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the earth. Is there any problem with eating and drinking? I hope I ate when I was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so the Bible really tells us that there will be a corruption in eating and drinking and there will be a corruption in the right manner of marrying and being given into marriages. There is no sin in eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. And as a result, because of this, the Bible continues to say, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now what did make them not enter the ark, forget about the business of entering the ark and be saved, is because they considered eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage as supreme, as the entire purpose of life alone. And the same thing has been happening today just as it happened in Noah's time. Can you imagine Noah entered the ark, seven days he was inside the ark, but a while the door was entirely open, but no man could enter because they were eating and drinking, forgetting the other businesses of the future life. And instead of eating in the way that God has given to us, these people together with our people today, they have ate into gluttony and instead of drinking, it has been alcoholism. In others, our eating and drinking and our marrying and giving and marriage, that not all that, affects us on how we see the future. 
In other words, if you do right, you do everything according to the will of God, you can remain with your purpose, but if you do according to your will, instead of God's will, there will be trouble. May God help us. So we might not have enough understanding of various things, but the Bible brings to us and it warns us against eating, drinking in ways that the Lord does not allow. And they knew not. And so that means that people can do things without knowing. Do you know that before the flood, there was no writing? <laughs> Whatever you would teach someone in a lecture room, they would get it and produce it exactly in the exam. They would not scratch the head or count the hand sheets or the ceiling. You know what I'm talking about? The students. But these guys who were so intelligent, they knew not that the flood was coming. Are people aware that the world is coming to an end? Things seem to be normal. <laughs> Very interesting. No yet they are with his family. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses number 5, as much as he built, he was a preacher of righteousness. By him obeying the will of God, he witnessed that wicked generation that indeed the word of God was true. And, and God tells not, listen to this, build for me enough. And let everyone, whoever wants to be saved, come in. But Noah ended up entering in with his own family. And what was the theme of his preaching? <laughs> everything is about change. And today we come to you with the same theme that everything is about to change. Did things change in the days of Noah? Absolutely. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. And the entire world was destroyed by fire, by water. And at the end time, it's going to be destroyed by fire. We'll That's see what, that in a future lesson. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse number 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In the days of Noah, they did not expect the end of, of the world then, but it did occur. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, verse number 5, that that was a wicked generation. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And, so, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. Can you imagine even in the dreams, in the days of Noah, people were sinning. <laughs> Very interesting. That is why in these last days the same thing is being described to us. Today it seems no more for a man to marry a mother. God forbid. And that is why even today the thoughts of man are evil continuously. The evil was continuous and continually moving forward that even if God gave that planet more 10,000 years, there would be no change. In verses number 11, the Bible says, Genesis chapter 6, the earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And so what God decided to do was cleanse it with a flood of water. Is that a picture of our modern world today? Blabber, it's even becoming worse. Sign number seven. Increase in violence, violence and terrorism. Today it seems no more a human being killed a fair human being. And it seems that every time you turn on your news, there's something new concerning killings and terrorism. We are witnessing an increase in violence and terrorism all the world. Blooded, and because of the violence happening around the world, Luke 21, verse 26 says, The Bible says, men's hearts failing them for fear. Many people are wondering in their hearts, I am studying, I am working hard, but what is ahead? What is exactly coming? And as a Christian, do we need to be afraid about the future? In fact, Jesus has the solution. The Bible says, let not your hearts be troubled, I will come again. This world is not our end. And therefore, if you know that this world is not a, your end, 
The way you and I should live, we should live knowing this is not our final destination. And what is Jesus saying to us today? Let not your heart be troubled, believe in God. In the book of Isaiah chapter 51 verses number 6, the Bible also gives us a condition of the earth. And the Bible says that the earth will grow old like a garment. Now which sign is there? That is global pollution. There is global warming, global pollution, that the ozone layer that should be preventing us from being scorched by the sun rays, the ultraviolet rays, has been eaten away because of man's misuse of the life of the planet Earth. And as a result, our water is polluted, our air is polluted, and everything that we have around is polluted. 2.5 acres of forest is destroyed every second all over the world. Every second, that's interesting. That's a large area of forest. That amounts to an area of forest larger than the states of Coronado. <laughs> In other words, the entire, you can imagine, the entire area of Bishaka, Bishenyi, where we are, is destroyed. Part of the entire area of Bishaka is destroyed by and is, second. And yes, is, that, is that having any effect in our global climate? Now, this is something we need to appreciate. Plants, they breathe, oxy they breathe oxygen at night and carbon dioxide during the day. And so they give us a lot of oxygen that refreshes the environment. And so if the plants are destroyed, what do you expect? What about the temperatures around us? The temperatures have been escalating and surging. In fact, we have 10 hottest global years on record. And you can look there, the year 2000. And 2016 was the hottest year on the record so far. And we have 2020. During the time of the COVID-19, there were areas where it was super hot. Let's look at the height temperatures. Can you imagine you live in a place where it is 118 degrees Celsius? 109. How much Celsius does water boil? <laughs> 100 degrees. This is serious. No wonder we have so much fires, especially in the European and European countries. And CNN News reports in July, that is 2021, that Canadian village devastated by the wildfires a day after temperatures topped 121 degrees. Do you wonder why air conditioners? Of course, here in Africa, maybe in the cities, that's where we have air conditioners. Why? It is hot outside there. Very interesting. Western Canada burns and deaths mounts after world's most extreme heat wave in modern history. Very interesting. We have a map that indicates the hottest areas. And I can see even Africa has some areas that are really very hot. Therefore, as a result, we are told that the fires in Lebanon and California are just some of the many fires in 2019 that are seen. Fires in the Amazon sparked a global outcry this summer, but fires have also been blazing in the Arctic, France, Greece, Indonesia, as well as many other areas in the world. Think about this. Is there nothing we can do as human beings that live on this planet? You know, when we are still young, we are always told, when you cut one tree, plant how many? Two. Plant how many? Oh, you are not there. For us, when we are growing, we are told, when you cut two trees, when you cut two trees, you plant four. When you cut one, you plant how many? Two. two. So this year, I decided to plant close a hundred trees. Beautiful. We praise God for that. Amen. At least when they grow, I will also know I'm contributing something to help the environment be better. You can plant flowers, they can also help. And so, global warming is part of the sign. And therefore, sign number nine is global climate change and extreme weather. It is going to be hotter 
even in the most coldest areas of this planet Earth. And did you hear that 2020 is the second deadliest year in the calendar of the entire world's history? In Luke 21, verse 25, and upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. When you read the, in the Guardian News, that's May 27, 2016, we are told, whatever happened to normal weather, lately it seems that the treadmill of disruptive weather has been set to fast forward. When we see the Katonga River here in Uganda being surged by the flooding waters, God says, let not your heart be troubled, I will come again. Beloved, Jesus knows that sin has affected this planet and the only solution is to remove my people, take them to heaven and destroy this planet. And and this, and so as all these things are happening, you don't have to fear. Jesus is about to come again. That brings us to the sign that gives us hope. And what is it? The gospel sign. The Bible says in Matthew 24, verses number 14, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The reason we are here is for one purpose, preach the gospel of the kingdom as the signs that indicate that the world is coming to an end. When they come, they find us to be ready. And so the greatest climax of the signs of the times is a preaching of the good news which is called the gospel that is to prepare the entire world for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And before this gospel is preached to the entire world, the world cannot come to an end. We will burn here until the gospel is preached. So, invite your friend. And that is why this gospel is presented to you, but as a witness. There are many parts of the world that have received the gospel in different parts, in Russia, in India, in Europe, in America, I believe also here in Africa. We need to receive the gospel as much as those missionaries who brought the, the gospel Firstly, within our continent. And today the gospel is being preached even in places where the Bible is prohibited. Very interesting. Even in the Arab world, the gospel is being preached over the televisions and the internet. Yeah, last week we were doing a gospel presentation in Haiti where it's, it's completely out of the law to preach there. Very interesting, a few months ago I was presenting the gospel to the refugees and I was so amazed how the refugees, they are yearning for the word of God. That is why the Bible says in Matthew 24 verse 14 in this gospel of the kingdom. And even you, you can hear the gospel because God has given you the intelligence and he wants us to be prepared for the end of the world. And today this gospel as we continue is being preached in missions, in places like this, in radios, in television. In satellites, and Jesus wants to reach you with the same gospel. And when all these signs are happening, what should we do? The Bible says in Luke 21, verse 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. In the days of Noah, when Noah was saying, The flood is coming, enter the ark. People are looking in their plates. What can I eat tomorrow? What shall I eat next week? People are looking left and right on the things of the earth that finally they forgot about the coming of the flood. And that is why today Jesus reminds us where to look up. We are to look beyond this earthly life that we may see what exactly is Jesus Christ admonishing us in preparation for heaven. And so friends, lift up your heads, lift up your eyes, look unto him who is the creator of the universe, he who has created you, he who has lived, gotten his life out for the salvation of your life and my life. And the Bible says that as we look at the things happening, 
We ought not only to open our eyes, but to lift our hearts and bring them closer to Jesus. Is the end near? Of course, yes. The Bible says that Jesus is coming again. But we do not need fear for the future. Because the Bible says, let not your hearts be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now listen to this. The world is not going to be better. And that is why Jesus says, don't be troubled. The world is not going to be better from 2020, the time of COVID-19. However, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. I want to hear you, let not your heart be Thank you very much. So Jesus knew that we will be living in trouble. Jesus knew that trouble will come. And we are going to see why is there so much trouble. Let not your heart be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That is why today, as the paranoma of Bible prophecy, we want to remind you of the greatest theme of the Bible. Everything is about change. And things will change in every sphere, economically, or it will change climatically, uh -huh. it will change Just morally. Like things are changing. And as a result, the Lord is longing and calling for all the people in the world to look up. And as the world is changing. The question is, will you allow Jesus Christ, you and I, that he may change our hearts to be prepared to be where he is? And so friends, as we continue with this seminar, we want to invite you and show you and give you the principles and show you the steps you can make to prepare your hearts and be ready for the things to change. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. And so, friends, if your hearts are troubled, get time. Come to this place. Learn on how to make your life having a relationship with Jesus. Jesus is preparing a place for you in particular. That is why he wants you to be there. And he wants you to be prepared because heaven is another nation where we are going to live. So we must learn the culture of that heavenly kingdom. And the paranormal of Bible prophecy gives you that opportunity for free. How many are saying, Lord, I want you to change me for the better and prepare me for the heavenly kingdom where you are preparing a place for me. Let me see my show of hands. Beautiful. I am one of them. I want Jesus to change my life. And so, friends, this evening we want to bring and present to you the greatest hope of life. There is hope for you. Today's news is full of signs. There is hope for you. We see them in the world's headlines. There is hope for you in it. Events on earth, God's word defines. Yes, there is hope for you in Christ Jesus. And so, friends, there is hope for you. This world's end is very near. There is hope for you. There is no need for fearing. There is hope for you. Christ's return is almost here. Yes. By the way, let me tell you something. I have much hope that Christ is going to come when most of us are still alive. Now, someone is like, huh, how do you know that? You know why you ask yourself that question? Look up! Study your Bible very well. You will be amazed as we deal with the panorama of Bible prophecy. As we close up tonight, we want to church you and challenge you to invite a friend tomorrow as we look upon the new world order that is coming. Let's stand up and have a lot of prayer as we close tonight. We still have some few flyers for those who are here at our local site. You can take some few flyers, handbills, 
pass on to our friend. We will be beginning at exactly 6. Make sure we finish early during the weekdays. Let's pray. Our gracious Lord, thank you for your life. We ask for the forgiveness of our sins. We learn tonight that you will come again and take us very well. We give you our hearts that you will change them for the better. And you will bless us with your power, with your spirit. Let your will be done in us as it is done in heaven. And bless someone with this tonight, that they may stop fearing, but rather than trust in you, our Lord and Savior. Let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We want to thank you for joining us this evening and pray that you will be with us tomorrow and invite a friend, even invite your enemies. They also need to be set. And tomorrow we will be having a special registration table. We will have some free lessons that you will pick up in case you need. At our registration desk will be at that corner at exactly 6. Please be present. God bless you and be happy to see you again. We will be presenting together. We have different sites that we are presenting on. In case you don't see me or you don't see him, don't say now where is our preacher. We are dealing to sites at the same time. We love you so much and have a blessed night.